ask and you shall receive. This week we are talking about all of the sweaters that I've knit. Hello, I'm Kristen, also known as Woolen Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs, and this week we are talking sweaters. You guys enjoyed my episode on shawls so much that you asked me to do one on all of my sweaters. I actually lied, I do not have all of the sweaters that I have <laughs> ever knit with me today. I actually ended up de-stashing quite a few of them because either they just didn't fit into my wardrobe, they did not fit me right, or they were just too hideous that I just wanted to kind of forget about that they ever existed. I believe I have about 10 or 11 sweaters to share with you, so uh, grab a cup of something and gather around and let's let, let's chat sweaters. All right, let's start with this cardigan. This is the Damyaka Lopa, a wonderful pattern by Pine Gori. Uh, and yeah, easily one of my very, very favorite makes to date. Um, and it was actually my very first experience steaking a cardigan or a sweater. And if you're not familiar with steaking is, it's when you knit an entire car um, sweater in the round and then you cut up the front uh, of your knitting to insert a button band to turn it into a cardigan. As it happens, I ended up washing this in the washing machine because I did hear if you have it set to a low temperature, you can get away with it. Uh, the, the yarn is Jameson Spindrift. Uh, so yeah, it's 100% wool and yeah, probably not the best idea, but I heard that you can put it into the washing machine and have it come out okay if you have it set to the right settings. Uh, and I did, I, here's where I think uh, the issue lies because I think the washing machines in Europe or the UK have a setting where you can set your washing machine to a certain temperature or a specific temperature. Here in the US, or the at least the machine that I have, only allows you to set it to, um, you know, cool wash. So, which apparently is still more heat than this cardigan could apparently handle. It still fits, it's just a little bit more snug than it was already. This was definitely a learning process for me. Uh, this is easily one of my favorite sweaters. Uh, unfortunately, because it kind of shrunk a little bit, it does not get as much wear as it uh, does as it used to when I finished it, but I still love it. I want to knit another one actually uh, in similar colors, maybe the same yarn, but maybe sizing it up a little bit uh, because even though it did shrink in the wash before it shrunk, it was still just a little bit snug on me. But at the same time, I still love it. I can get, I think I can totally get away with wearing it without a shirt underneath. So anyway, um, yeah. Definitely recommend this pattern. It was really fun to knit. I think I actually knit this uh, as a knit along with Ellie, who is Skein Deer, uh, or Skein Deer Knits. If you don't know her, get thee out from under thy log. Uh, she is amazing and she's a wonderful pattern designer and you should check her out. As is Pinay Gori, who is the designer of this lovely cardigan right here. So I will, of course, link to all these cardigan and sweater patterns below where you can find them and maybe make them yourselves. Next up is a more recent make, uh, and this is the Ingles Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. And I knit this out of my hand-dyed yarn, Volan Vine Yarns, in my Smitten DK base. And the main color is Weep, and the contrasting snowflakey, I guess you could call these snowflakes, uh, is out of my succulents colorway. And I knit that out of um, Smitten DK held together with my ghost lace base, so it has this ever so subtle fluff happening along the color work. Um, and this was a really enjoyable make as well because you get all that color work action at the top and then it's all just smooth sailing down to the ribbing. And you're probably wondering why I have a, bob a, a bobby pin here. Uh, number one is because I could not find a stitch marker at the time. Number two is I am actually going to frog back all the way up to here and knit the ribbing down because I will be totally honest, I do not wear this sweater at all because it is so long. And after knitting several sweaters, I realized I do actually like a, a little bit of a crop top when it comes to sweaters. It's just a matter of me carving out the time to frog back and re-knit the ribbing at a shorter length. So yeah, I'm gonna end the sweater here and then knit a little bit of ribbing here and I will probably be able to get a lot more wear out of this come next winter. And yeah, the only modification, I don't even think this was a modification. Um, I did not do any sleeve shaping other than knitting all the way in the round and then making kind of like a little poof, uh, gathered poof at the, the sleeve cuff. And yeah, um, again, really, really enjoyable knit. I just unfortunately have not been getting anywhere of it because of its length. So yeah, that is one alteration that I will be 
making hopefully in the near future. Next up is another recent make. This is my Threep Muir pullover, a pattern by Isolde Teague. And this was definitely a very popular pattern. I think when she came out with it a couple years ago, I think like two, three years ago she came out with it. But again, just a really fun, uh, wonderful color work pattern. Uh, the yoke is just incredible. And she has a really cool way of kind of catching the floats in between this gap right here. What I really love about knitting is that there's more than one way to do a certain technique. So, you know, when it comes to short rows, you have German short rows, you have your regular wrap and turn short rows. You pick whichever technique you want to you want to work with or whatever effect you're trying to get. Um, and when you, when you catch your floats in between this gap right here, and if you can see here, there's a gap between color changes. So when that happens, you need to uh, catch your floats so you don't have any loose strands hanging on the backside so it doesn't you know cause any puckering or it won't snag on um, any, any jewelry or something you're wearing under the sweater. Let me see if I can find a, yeah, right here. So... So right here, you can see where I caught my float. So you don't have this loose strand draping down. It actually is secured behind this uh, catch stitch right here. And I'm forgetting exactly the type of technique she used, but it's actually really clever uh, compared to the typical way of catching your floats when knitting color work. Um, you know, I will I will try and put, I don't, I don't know if there's a video tutorial for it, but I, if I do find it, I will link to it down below. But yeah, this is my Threep Muir. Again, uh, the same yarn that I used to knit my Damiaka Lopa, Jameson. Actually, I think it's a combination of Jameson Spindrift and Jameson Shetland because I always get those two confused because they have very similar company names, but, and the yarns are very interchangeable. You can't really tell them apart, but two different companies, same type of yarn, they work lovely together and yeah again just a really fun enjoyable knit and I think I was knitting this in tandem with my Damiaka Lopa at the same time. Yeah really ambitious two color work projects simultaneously. What was I thinking? I have no idea but I got it done <laughs> so yay and I do actually wear this sweater quite a bit so a uh, really awesome pattern uh, definitely give it a go if you are into color work. This one is easily one of my most worn sweaters of all time. Uh, and I recently knit this one. This is the Tanya, a pattern by, again, Caitlin Hunter, who's one of my favorite pattern knitwear designers. She just has like such a cool aesthetic and I, I don't know what it is, I love it. And I wasn't sure I was going to really get much wear out of this because, you know, generally it has like a little bit of an A-line shape to it, so it kind of tents out a little bit, but I do have a tendency to wear a lot of kind of baby doll dresses. If <laughs> I hate calling them baby doll because it just sounds weird. I don't know. Just general casual dresses that I wear have like kind of a uh, an umpier waistline to them and just chucking it over and just chucking the sweater over an outfit like that just it completes the look, so to speak. So, uh, you know, I really, really did enjoy working on this sweater it, and the yarn, the yarn. Oh my gosh, you guys, so good. This is, the yarn is Viola. Uh, I think, I believe it's Viola in the Moon. I, Viola Yarns, I think that's just what her line is called. She just has the most beautiful colorways. Uh, I purchased this yarn at uh, Indie, Untangled, Indie Untangled two years ago, and I actually got to meet Emily, who's the dyer behind Viola Yarns, and she's she's so lovely, and I totally fangirled. I'm, not, I'm completely shameless when it comes to that, and I knit this holding two strands of her yarn together. One was, I believe, her sock weight yarn, and the other was her mohair lace yarn, and I'm completely blanking on the fiber content and the base names and everything. All I knew is that the colors and the yarn was just so scrumptious and yummy and delightful to work with. And, and this is what came of it. And I don't know if you can see, I did not alternate skeins while knitting this. It was com knit completely in the round, but you can see the, the color was completely consistent. I mean, if you look up here, I, it's, there is a little difference between this skein and this skein, but at the same time, it just faded into one another so nicely. Um, and I just really enjoyed working on this one. And yeah, as I mentioned, it gets so much wear and takes a lot of wear and tear. No pilling, no pilling at all. So, Here's one that I knit a long time ago, and sadly, it does not get much wear. I don't know why, but this is my Palm de Pin, a, part, a cardigan by Amy Christophers, and I will try it on. I don't know why it just doesn't get much wear. It's very cozy, and yeah, I don't know why I don't wear this more often. 
I think it's the shaping. The shaping's a little off and the neckline, it just, it's kind of floppy and there's like no structure to it. I think that's why. I really wasn't jiving with that. But you know, at the same time, it was, again, a labor of love. I spent a lot of time knitting it. The yarn is Blue Moon Fiber Arts in their uh, Unrelenting Shade of Gray. I believe that was the name of the colorway. Do not ask me how I remember that. It's a sport weight yarn. Uh, it's not holding up very well. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, you can't really tell, but it is a little fuzzy and pilly. Um, you know, maybe it's because I did not properly store this and it's just been getting a lot of wear and tear in storage. Maybe I will take this out of storage and try wearing it a little more often, but yeah, it's a, it was a great pattern and, you know, it took me a while to knit. One of my first cardigans that I've ever knit and, you know, it's, I love these shawl collars, so I don't know. I must have knit this like six years ago, if I had a guess. I've lived here for five years. Six, seven probably like six or seven years ago. So yeah, this was, this was an early make. Um, but yeah, I should, I should probably just give it a nice good wash and probably give more life to it because it is, it is a nice cardigan. And, um, I did put a lot of work in it and I, yeah, I don't know. I think it needs just a good blocking and we shall see. We shall see. Staying on the topic of Amy Christopher's, fast forward six or seven years later, I knit another one of her patterns <laughs> and this is the Felix Pullover. I believe this was the last sweater that I ever, that I knit, that I completed. And this has been getting a lot of wear since I finished it. Um, yeah, and it's just a basic uh, raglan pullover with a really interesting lace uh, pattern happening at the raglan decreases over here, or increases, I should say, since I knit it from the top down. Um, yeah, and I, I just really love how versatile it is and cozy and snuggly. Uh, the yarn is, oh goodness, I talked about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. I could, I got so tired of hearing myself talk about it and now I can't remember it. Uh, I can't find it right now, but anyway, uh, it is, I believe it's Bliss Sublime Yarn. It's an iron weight yarn with um, some wool and some viscose in here, uh, but just a really lovely workhorse yarn. And again, I highly recommend working with it if you've never worked with it before. Uh, but what I really love about this yarn is that not only is it mauve, I mean, you know, hey, but it has uh, these subtle flecks or pops of color, um, tweety, Tweety flecks and pops of color in here. Like you have hot pink, you have blue, you have yellow. Um, yeah, just a really multi-dimensional type of yarn, if you will. Again, another great pattern. Uh, it's, especially if you're just looking for something you can go on autopilot with, highly recommend it uh, and talk about instant gratification. It's a win, I think. Here's another cardigan that I made that sadly does not get a lot of wear. Uh, this is my Belmont cardigan, a pattern by Gudrun Johnston. And again, a really, really lovely pattern. Uh, it was very well written and I enjoyed knitting every stitch of it. And the yarn, the yarn is scrumptious, my friends. Uh, this is Tuku Wool in their Uyo colorway uh, that I picked up from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Did I pick it up from the Yeah, I believe I did. I did pick it up from EYF uh, like two, two years ago. However, it's just a little too cropped for my liking. So <laughs> it was knit from the bottom up and that's the issue with patterns that are knit from the bottom up. There's no way to kind of like gauge, so to speak, um, you know, where, <laughs> where it's gonna fall on, on your waist. Um, certain dresses I can get away with it, but for the most part, it's it's a little snug and a little too cropped. Um, and I, I considered ripping it out and just doing something else with the, with the yarn, but at the same time, I'm just, I'm torn. I'm really torn about what to do with this cardigan. I mean, I know for sure it's just not getting, it's not getting any love from me other than just sitting in my drawer, me pulling my drawer open and ooing and eyeing at it and being kind of sad that I don't get to wear it. Um, and especially the buttons. I mean, these were a lovely gift from a podcast viewer and you know, it just, the, the project just went completely hand in hand. So I'll say that I enjoyed the process of knitting this. I love the finished object. It's just not getting anywhere for me because it's too short and just a little too small on me. So yeah, I've, I've got a lot to think about what, about what I want to do with this. Um, but yeah, in the mean, let me, let me know in the comments below if you have any genius ideas, cause I'm, I'm at a loss. I really don't want to rip it out, but at the same time, it's just not going to get any love from me. So maybe, maybe I will just gift it to my, to my niece because I have a feeling it would actually fit her. Anyway, 
speaking of crop tops, uh, this has been getting quite a lot of wear for me th this past year. <laughs> and this is the Love Note Pullover, a pattern by Tin Can Knits. I don't know, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, it's It's been doing the rounds and I feel like everyone and their monkey's uncle has cast one on and knit one and yeah, a very popular pattern. And and of course I knit this out of my own hand dyed yarn, Von Vine Yarns, <laughs> uh, holding a strand of my Nouveau base uh, together with Ghost Lace. and. Oh, it's so cozy guys and I've been wearing this over a lot of skirts. This skirt in particular doesn't really go with this pullover per se, but uh, with dresses it it's just really it's been really great just to like chuck it on over a dress and call it a day and it keeps me so warm and so cozy. I'm completely in love with the the lace motif along the yoke and again just another instant gratification it because it has a very intuitive lace motif up here and then it's all just stocking it in the round. Yeah, the love note is definitely a really great pattern. I could totally see myself making another one of these in maybe a more neutral shade because this has been getting so much wear this past year. But anyway, let's let's move on. Uh, here is another Caitlin Hunter pullover that I knit. Uh, again, I could knit all the Caitlin Hunter things. She, I just love her patterns and her aesthetic. Uh, and this is the Zweig pullover. And I will stand up so you can see it in all its glory. There you go. And this is knit out of my hand dyed yarns, surprise, surprise, once again. <laughs> uh, this pink mauve right up here is my Volendvine number no. 9 colorway, and then the contrasting is Solstice. And I will say this is the first incarnation of Volendvine number no. 9. And while this pullover did get a lot of wear, it's just a little too pink for my liking. So I have since uh, reinvented the colorway. It's, it's more muted and more dark, so to speak, with more like brownish undertones. But anyway, while it is a little too pink, for my personal taste, it still gets quite a lot of wear for me. Um, it's just, it's very festive. It's very festive if I can describe it as such. And it fits like a glove and I don't think I even swatched for it. So <laughs> that was, that was a win. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think what I want to say about it other than it's a great pattern. I could probably knit another one if I wanted to. I will probably knit, no I will actually, I think I'm actually going to knit another one of these at some point, just in maybe more neutral shades, because as I, as I expressed many times in the last vlog about my shawls, choosing different color palettes and colors that fit more into my wardrobe, uh, stuff that I wear versus stuff that I don't wear, I think I need to err on the side of neutral shades or stuff that I want to gravitate more towards. While some colorways are super fun to knit with, at the end of the day, I want to be able to wear the, the finished garment and not let it languish in my in my uh, wardrobe and not get any love from me. Um, but although this is an exception, chalk it up to a phenomenon of, of literally sorts, go figure. But anyway, moving along, I have about, I think I have about two more sweaters to share with you. So let's, let's keep going. Uh, this is a recent make and this might look very familiar, but this is my Mazzy cardigan by Elizabeth Smith. And the yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in their cast iron colorway. And I've been getting so much wear out of this. It's so cozy and so warm, but I will say the yarn, unfortunately, is not holding up. This is going to be a very unpopular opinion because I really want to like Brooklyn Tweed yarns and I really want to like Brooklyn Tweed patterns, but at the end of the day, I just don't jive with them. And I thought I had a breakthrough with with this pattern, knitting with Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, and my, my one issue with Brooklyn Tweed yarn. The yarn's integrity, I feel like maybe it's because I have a tight gauge or whatever, but I find the yarn very delicate to work with and I have to be very careful that I'm not too, I don't knit too tightly with it because it has a tendency to like just, you know, poof apart, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I thought I had a breakthrough with this pattern and, you know, it's been getting a lot of wear, but I just find the integrity of the fabric. Maybe it's just the yarn and the pattern, I don't know, but it's not holding up as well as I would like it to or ha or expect it to. It's 100% targi wool, but it's it's very lofty, which is nice, but at the same time, it's also pilling a lot. Um, and the shape is not really holding up very well. So I will stand up so you can see. Um, yeah, again, with, you know, these open cardigans, uh, you know, like with the palm de pin, it, it's a little floppy on the 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 button band so to speak or the uh the side band and yeah it's just it's pilly and i only just finished knitting this maybe i want to say six months ago 
at least. So, you know, the fact that it's not holding up that well is kind of wah wah. But you know, it is what it is and I did get a lot of wear and love out of it so I'm not complaining. Lesson learned. I guess like Brooklyn Tweed patterns and yarns are just not for me. Your mileage may vary. <sighs> yeah. All knitters are different, right? And nothing against Brooklyn Tweed. I love his aesthetic. I love, you know, I love the yarn. It's very squidgy and nice, but I just don't work well with it. Um, and patterns and Brooklyn Tweed patterns and I just don't just don't work out sometimes. So anyway, um, that's that's my personal brand of crazy method to my madness and 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 that's my Mazzy cardigan. Last but not least, this is actually a pullover of my own design uh, that I knit, I wanna say eight or nine years ago because I knit this while over the summer while on vacation with Dennis after we got married. So yeah, we are going, when did we get married? We got married in 2011, so yeah, that's how old it is. I actually designed this using Elizabeth Zimmerman's percentage system. So, you know, you figure out, uh, you knit a swatch and then figure out your bust measurements and then you allocate those measurements across your, uh, your arm circumference, your wrist circumference. And, you know, you just basically work out a bunch of measurements based on that one swatch, which is brilliant and super simple. Um, although <laughs> it's been quite some time since I designed a sweater. I'm, I don't know, it, it's been a while and I'm just a little bit intimidated by doing, by jumping into it again, but I know, I know at some point I'm going to want to design a sweater again. So, you know, anyway, I, the fact that I've done it before, I know that I can do it again. And the yarn that I used for this, are you ready for it, is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool that I purchased from Michaels. You can't go wrong with that. It's just basically 100% wool that's undyed. It's all natural and, you know, I mean, for a big box, brand store, that is a total win. Uh, and I believe they still make it too. So anyway, that's what I knit it out of. And I sourced this colorwork motif from this book, which is Traditional Fair Isle Knitting from Sheila McGre by Sheila McGregor. And this book I picked up from Barnes & Noble many, many moons ago, but just a whole plethora, a treasure trove of, um, you know, traditional Fair Isle knitting motifs and they even give you history, a history behind Fair Isle knitting. It's such a great book and you know I just basically picked a motif that matched the the stitch count that I had and plugged and played basically. Yeah super warm and cozy and you know I will stand up so you can see. Um, yeah there's a little bit of ease built into here I want to say about like four inches total. Uh, yeah and I, I will be totally honest I didn't really have any clue what I was doing when I was designing this. I was just basically following Elizabeth Zimmerman's instructions and and here we are. Uh, it, it fits like a glove and I love it to death and I still plan on keeping this in my in my wardrobe for as long as it holds up and it my friends, it's been holding up very, very well. Um, no pilling at all to speak of. Yeah, it's just, it looks like a brand new sweater basically. Um, and yeah, again, it's just 100% wool and there's, I believe there's a reason why they call it fisherman's wool because it holds up and it keeps me warm and I'm actually getting a little schwitzy in here right now. I believe those are all the sweaters that I have to share with you. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see all the sweaters that I've knit over the years. As I mentioned, these are not all of them. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've since de-stashed quite a few over, over time. Either they just didn't fit with my wardrobe or I just kind of wanted to forget about them because Oh my goodness, I've, I've knit some gems, my friends. But anyway, um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed getting to see them and hopefully maybe inspired you to cast one of these on yourselves. Uh, which was your favorite sweater? Have you knit any of these sweaters before? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you thought about them. So anyway, uh, I will vamanos because I've got some work to do, but until the next video, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.